absolutely. We've heard some very good insights on how market concentration can affect small producers and who is actually able to stay in business under an increasingly monopolized agricultural sector. Uh, but it's also important to look at how market concentration affects the actual policy making and how we come to get new trade negotiations and trade agreements. Uh, so looking at the U.S. trade advisory system, this is something that was created 50 years ago with an aim to adequately represent the public and private interest in trade negotiation. It's a fine idea on paper, but in reality, it grants a privileged set of mainly large private corporations more of a say in trade negotiations than people like publicly elected officials. Last spring, Rethink Trade published an infographic report breaking down the trade advisory system based on the advisor's interests. And our team found that despite agriculture representing only 5.4% of the U.S. economy, more than 40% of the trade advisors in the system represented agricultural or food manufacturing interests. Of those ag and food product advisors, the vast majority hail from large corporations or corporate trade associations, as opposed to small independent producers. A key example is Corteva AgriScience. This is one of two companies that control more than two thirds of the corn and soybean seed markets. And it's also a company that had three individual representatives in the trade advisory system to advocate for its own interests. Corporations that gain huge amounts of market power also get the opportunity to shape trade policy that puts them at an advantage over smaller competitors and insert the terms that work for them into new US trade agreements. And as we mentioned, the nearly $180 million that was spent on lobbying from the agribusiness sector that Open Secrets reported for last year alone.